Hey guys, so what's been happening in the hobby this week? Well, I thought we'd uh, talk about, you know, the benefits of uh, collecting a faction rather than just an army. And uh, this sort of carries on from our discussions previously where I've talked about sort of having a gaming army or an army that you focus on that and, you know, uh, coupling that with a good paint scheme that allows you to get units done faster and that sort of thing. So going along the lines of that discussion, we're going to talk about the, the benefits of, I guess, you know, treating your collection as a, like, collecting a faction, a single faction, uh, rather than just an army list or a, you know, a set number of points, but looking at it more as a holistic kind of collection. So you have more to, to go on and, and, and yeah, discussing the benefits of that and, and, and what that might do for you. My own, I guess, faction collection is uh, Stormcast and I try to, um, you know, build more than just a 2000 point army for, for that particular collection. So I have more to work from. And we're gonna talk about that in a second. So I thought to, to couple with this discussion, um, what better way to do that than um, showcasing my first, I guess, simple conversion here of uh, a knight in canter. So I'm just using the Lord Arcanum on foot model with a with a head swap and a and a, a hand and and a swap here. The Lord Arcanum has a sword, so I just took that off and added uh, you know another hand and and then um, this bird. I thought considering the knight in canter has that storm void or you know that that spell where he where he calls the storm. I thought it'd be fun to have the bird as his familiar calling in the storm and the you know the wind swept hair and so on. So that was a nice little uh, touch for this one. Uh, yeah, so I think that'll be really cool. So he'll be done in my usual custom scheme, uh, you know, which is uh, still very pleasurable to do, I'll have to say. After 5,000 points of painting these, uh, I'm still having fun painting this color scheme. It's really fun. So if you haven't seen that, check out any of the videos on my channel. There's a ton of those uh, videos there for you if you're looking for a good scheme for, for Stormcast, but I'm about to do it now, so you'll see it in action. Uh, but yeah, I think this will be a good one, a good topic to discuss. So I guess we should... Uh, uh, get started, eh? So yeah, collecting a faction. So what am I really talking about? Well, it's, it's I guess, uh, going along the lines of, you know, looking at an army as more than just a single list uh, or, or a single collection of, of minis, but rather that than, you know, a faction you're going to dig into and develop and build a, a wider collection uh, and play play many games with that with that singular faction. Uh, and and there's, there's a few reasons why this is a good thing, uh, because um, we'll go into that shortly, but but, you know, things to do with the nature of how fast the game changes, etc. We're talking specifically now in AOS uh, currently, but this, this idea works for any game system or anything where you have a lot of changes or a lot of, you know, competitive play, that sort of thing. There's many different um, aspects to why this is a good thing, uh, development of your painting process, etc. There's a lot to go into here, so we're not going to touch on everything, but I'm going to try to at least hit some of the main points uh, that, that go into, you know, the benefits of... of, of honing down your, um, your, I guess, you know, interests into one specific area. Uh, now, that doesn't mean that you're going to have others as well. They're, they're, this goes in hand with a few other concepts, which I'll, I'll touch on. Uh, I've, I've talked about these things before, but we'll go through them again, because I think it is an interesting way to approach your hobby collection and also one that has some benefits to it. So, um, you know, yeah, so let, let, let's get into that. So, you know, collecting that single faction. Well, I guess the, the, the first part of it is, uh, well, myself, personally, the way I look at it is I have some, which I've talked about before, which are like gaming factions, where I collect a, a lot of that. Uh, that's that singular faction idea, uh, where you're doing more than 2,000 points. And then there are others, and they're usually done in a style, so from a painting point of view, it's usually looking at faster schemes, faster ways to approach it, to get them done in a, in a more efficient uh, manner, so that you can actually keep up with the pace of the game, and so on, and, and get have more dynamic games, different lists, etc. Uh, then I'll have other other factions or armies that I do uh, or collections which are more about the painting and the hobby side. So they're slower going, you know, slow burn. I don't need to get them done any, at any time soon. You know, they're just slowly building up. You know, my Soul Blight collection would be one of those. Uh, the, the Nurgle stuff would be one of those. Um, you know, uh, those sorts of, you know, collections, my Death Guard, etc. Uh, you know, they're, they're a slower burn. They don't need to be done any, anytime soon. And I get my gaming fix from those, those factions that I'm collecting 
acting as a faction, as a gaming uh, army. So that's kind of, you know, I guess they're all being collected as a faction because I'm just collecting all those things. But specifically where we're sort of gearing this towards a more gaming idea so that you're utilizing it for the game and you you want to pair that with with some efficient processes like my stormcast scheme you know uh trying to find a way to have something that you're happy with that you can then uh you know basically churn out those units so that you can play games with them and, and, and get some get some good fun out of it while you've got your slower projects, things that you want to spend more time on. Uh, and so you get that ebb and flow of fast and slow. And I've talked about this many times to do with painting and, and, and your hobby and all that sort of thing. We're not going to go into that uh, hugely here, but that's the, the sort of the, I guess, the impetus for this discussion is looking at it from that idea, you know, and yes, then we're going to look at, you know, cost versus reward as well, because obviously this is a costly idea. Uh, but then again, if you're in the hobby, that shouldn't be a huge problem. So yeah, uh, moving on from that, we're now looking at, okay, so then, you know, if you are going to do this, you know, how do you go about that? What do you do? Well, I suppose you're just looking at, uh, for, from my opinion, it would be looking at a, a faction that is uh, conducive to the idea of, of um, you know, collection from that point of view. So I, 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 would, I would steer away from, let's say, choosing horde factions, that sort of thing, unless you're really into it, right? Uh, but if, if, you, if you do like another faction that's, let's say, a little bit more elite, like Stormcast or, or, or others that are like that, for instance, Chaos that's coming out would be a great one for a, for a gaming faction or, or that sort of thing, because they can be very elite, so you don't need a lot of models. And they have a, a wide diversity within within that faction. Slaves to Darkness has a huge amount of, of, of offerings that you can use, uh, lots of allied in units, and etc. And you can pivot out into any of the Chaos Gods. You know, there, there's so many good options there. So Chaos is a good one. However, the paint scheme could be problematic if you chose a very difficult one, but you can you can make it easy. You know, you can make it easy. You know, a metallic color scheme is one of those choices. Uh, you know, contrast paint, etc. There's many ways to, um, you know, scale down the complexity of a paint scheme. So, you know, Slaves to Darkness would be a good one if you're looking for, you know, a, a, good, a good supported range. And that brings on to the second point. You're looking for a faction that is, you know, uh, supported by Games Workshop rel relatively, you know, on a regular basis, that they've got a good range uh, and, and, and the books that they bring out for them are generally interesting. So elves are a good idea. You know, the Games Workshop love, a, love an elf book and they, you know, Lumineth have got like 500 books compared to everyone else. You know, someone in that head office really loves elves and they always get treated with, with a, lot of, um, a lot of support and respect and so on. So they always get good rules. You know, there's always good rules coming for those factions. So elves can be something that are, that are considered, you know, uh, if you like that style. Um, you know, death is a good one. But again, you are looking at a lot more painting time in that one, so that is something to consider. But that they do generally get a lot of support. It's it's just that the the gaming experience can be a little bit varied with death. So some editions they'll be really powerful and, and and a lot of fun. Other editions they'll get waylaid a little bit. And within death, there's definitely a a big variance between the the you know the sub factions that do well and the ones that don't that struggle a little bit. So that and that's also true of destruction. Destruction also has a a wide variance in terms of gameplay, um, but they can also be a good one. You know, Auric War Clans is a, is a is a good example of a a good gaming faction that has a lot of internal uh, variation inside of it. You know, the different types of orcs that you can play. Uh, you know, that that's that's another good one. Um, you know, as opposed to let's say doing Gloomsight Gets, which I would I would consider more as a more as a hobby uh, army or a faction that you would collect, uh, as opposed to um, a gaming one, because um, they're super fun and they're great models but they 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 always struggle a little bit because they're so sort of pigeonholed into one kind of idea so it's hard to create different variation lists you, you can do it but it doesn't quite work as well as let's say some of the other books um, so you know it's all about like looking for that one that satisfies your your hobby interests your the lore and the background and the imagery interests you know your your own inspiration to do it in the first place coupled with a gaming element and a supportive element from the company that makes it so you're kind of trying to balance all those out and find the one that that, that that fits most of those boxes are ticked you know you're going to have some things that you're going to have to you know uh i guess 
you know, that are going to fall short of your expectation or whatever. There's always that, that element, but finding one that, that really speaks to you and, and, and you think you'll be able to enjoy over the long term. And, and you know, it's always a gamble. You're going to pivot, you're going to change. And, and this idea may not, may not even work for you. I'm, uh, it's, it's one of those things where, you know, different strokes for different folks. Everyone has their own way of approaching this. But, you know, if you are someone that's looking for that type of idea, then maybe some of these points will help you uh, move forward on that. So, you know, for me, it was looking at Stormcast. Stormcast are basically, you know, the space marines of the of the fantasy world. And you know Games Workshop, they're the poster boys. They're always going to look, look after them and support them. They don't always have the most interesting rules. They don't always have, you know, necessarily, they're not always the top pick, but they always get a good amount of models. There's there's a huge range within within that book. And the allies that you can bring into that, in, into, that, into that list is also great. So there's a lot of variation there. Uh, and generally speaking, they're an elite army, so it's less models to paint to, to reach that 2,000 point mark, you know, or go beyond it. So there's all those types of elements going into why Stormcast are, are quite a good choice. Of course, I'm biased here because I paint them, but you know that the, that they do offer a, a chance to do a metallic scheme, which is very good, and you know obviously makes painting them so much easier. Uh, and, and the color scheme that you're watching me paint right now it is truly a, a, a quite enjoyable to do. Uh, you know, after all this time, I'm still enjoying it. And I've had many messages from people now. Uh, thank you very much to those that are watching that have sent me those messages that have used this scheme or, or sent me photos, etc. Um, it's amazing to see that this scheme actually does. Does work for other people as well, so I can confidently tell you that now uh, that this scheme actually does work, and if you, if you if you want to use it, you can. But with also enough variation in there to where you can make it your own. You don't have to follow every step. You don't have to do every every part of it. But it can give you a it's a good stepping off point to uh, creating a scheme that that's personalized to you. So yours will look different to mine, etc. And I think that's really beautiful and awesome. So you know that that sort of thing is great. But you know that it doesn't have to be. Uh, you know, Stormcast, as I said, you can pick whichever one speaks to you. And that's exactly what you should pick. You shouldn't be, you know, following my or, or everything I say and all that sort of thing. You want to, you want to make sure that it's, it's something that, that, that is, you know, ha has something about it that it, that is interesting to you because you are, you know, investing money. And now we're going to talk about that element of the money investment into, into the idea of like having a, a single, you know, larger collection for your gaming or for, you know, a larger faction collection like this um, is that it, it is going to obviously, uh, maybe put a burden on the cost. But uh, I, I don't know how much that is true, but it, you are certainly looking at a bigger outlay, uh, obviously. But I would say that even if you didn't have this in mind, you probably would jump around a bunch of armies and have a lot of small armies that are all half painted, you know, spending the same amount. So all I'm, all I'm saying is scaling down your resource into one uh, and maybe having a second or third uh, sideline army that you that you collect as a hobby, as a slower burn, as more of a you know a, a dig in sort of project that's that's maybe more personal to you, that sort of thing, and and have your main your main gaming faction army as as a bit wider collection uh, with a slightly faster or more efficient scheme. Uh, I think the the money you're spending is probably the same. You're just reallocating resources uh, in, in, into one to focus your attention on it, and I think that that can have uh, quite a lot of benefits. But you know we are still talking maybe a little more money than, than you would normally spend, I guess. Uh, but if, if you're interested in the gaming side of things, you're probably going to be doing that anyway. And there is obviously uh, other ways to uh, decrease the amount of money you're spending. You have, you know, secondhand uh, markets on, on online and so on, on social media, that sort of thing. Uh, you have 3D printing, if you're into that, that can also reduce the, the cost. Uh, although be aware, uh, 3D printing is its own hobby in its own right. And uh, in the early stages of 3D printing, you are actually adding cost into your hobby, not 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 uh, reducing it. It requires you to produce quite a lot of uh, minis with that machine before it starts to pay back and actually become cheaper. But in the early days, you're actually just adding a whole nother hobby on top of a hobby, right? So you are going to have to incur a bigger cost. So it, it won't be cheap. It'll seem cheaper, but the cost of the machine, the material, etc., the time, and so on that you go into that is actually adding more cost on top, uh, and and the learning process that goes into that. But once you're over that hurdle and you're starting to, you know. Uh, 
print quite a lot of models, then that cost starts to become effective. And so then your then your you know second and third armies that you print with it uh, will start to become a lot more a lot more cost effective. But it does take some time to build into that, which means you're going to have to you know be prepared to spend more in order to save more later. Uh, and and so that's that's one of those I guess hurdles to printing. But you know it is rewarding if you do go down that way. Obviously bearing in mind that it is toxic and you've got to be careful and wear safety equipment and all those sorts of things. But if you have the setup to be able to do it, then it's then it's a, a great option. Uh, so there are those kinds of things, you know, secondhand moles, etc., that you can you can bring down that that cost. You know, as, as you've seen here, I've made a conversion from a bunch of bits that I had in my bits box rather than uh, go and buy an Evocator box just to get one model out of it to get a night encanter or find somewhere online someone selling a night encanter and buy it that way. I just use bits that I already had, so I didn't have to spend any more money. You know, so there's all those sorts of things. And as you build your your faction collection, that's actually one of the the other benefits is you can have a quite a plethora of, of, of bits left over, which you can use to further extend your collection, right? And, and give you more options for those games that you want to play. And I think that's another kind of, I guess, you know, sideline benefit from this is that you can get a bit thrifty with it and, and create uh, new units, etc., with the parts that you already have. And I guess finally, uh, we'll talk about the benefits, you know, in terms of your skill as a gamer, right? So, you know, if you're collecting that bigger faction, you're using more units, more lists, uh, you're, you're going to develop your skill as, as a gamer, uh, you know, and, 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 bu and build that muscle memory, you know, understand how to play that game a lot more efficiently and a lot better than you would if you were jumping many, many armies, uh, because you start to understand the nuances, the, the way the units work, you get more out of them, you know, you're, you, you memorize all of the over time, you just naturally memorize all of the little, you know, ins and outs of the units and how they work. So you're not having to refer to books all the time. You know, you can really play the game as it's intended, you know, without all of that, you know, uh, added, you know, layers of of, of uh, reading and, and, and material that you have to, you know, ingest every time you play a game. By doing that one faction, you become so used to it, uh, that all becomes second nature and you can really dig into the tactics of the game. And I think that's where the biggest benefit from the the gaming side comes from not just the list variety but really the the memorization of all of those units uh, and, and it allows you it frees you from having to deal with that aspect of the game and it speeds you up and it, you get to be more in the moment and make those choices just like a chess player would or anyone else that plays tactical uh, board games of any sort or, or card games once you get past all of that sort of that, that functional knowledge uh, and you move into a different space. You start to be able to play with, with those concepts and be able to really dig into uh, the tactical play on, on the board. And that's a, that's a state that only like sort of top players generally get to. But I think focusing your attention on one faction definitely helps you get there faster than if you try to absorb many armies, you know, uh, rules and so on all the time. You, you never really get to master any one of them. And, and, and at the end of the day, that might not be a, um, you know, a, uh, I guess a goal for you or a, or, or, a, or a benefit that you even want. You might like the idea of dabbling and, and, and that's fine. You know, that's, that's totally, you know, we all do that to some degree, but having one that you kind of focus a bit more attention on. I mean, I play, I, you know, I do everything. I do multiple game systems, but within AOS, I do have this one collection that's a little larger than the rest and, and, and that allows me to remember more of those rules and that sort of thing. So, you, you, you know, there's, there's, there's gray areas, there's levels to this. It doesn't have to be all in or none in. You can be, you can be both. Uh, but it, but it, there, is, there is definitely some benefit to that. You know, um, I've been able to work through multiple lists. I've gone to a tournament. I've, you know, been able to adjust and grow with my collection and, and find new ways to write lists with the, with, even with the same models that I've got, like to, to to move it around a bit and, and find new ways to, to play them. And that's been really rewarding. So it's, it's, it's definitely got its benefits there. And I think that that's where we'll kind of leave it is like thinking about, you know, your collection as a holistic approach and, and how that can, how that can work for you. So you get more out of your gaming side and free you up to, to devote time to the projects from a painting and hobby point of view that really matter to you and, and, and not invest, 
you know, too much energy down a, a, a track that, that doesn't, you know, so that you can, you can get the most out of that hobby time too. So you, you devote that time to those special projects and then you have your other projects which are more dedicated to gaming. And so you don't have to put so much emphasis on yourself to always excel in that area. As we all know, that, that it can be debilitating, right? You know, trying to put that expectation on yourself, trying to, you know, paint all these amazing models. It can be really hard. But if you separate those things out and give yourself different levels to work with, I think that that's where, you know, it, it definitely does uh, help from a, from a mental state and just, you know, keep you happy in the hobby. And that's really the point, right? To be happy and enjoy the experience of being in this hobby because it is great. It's a, it's a wonderful thing to be a part of. So I think we'll leave it there on that positive note. And let's uh, check out this night in Canada and see how I've gone, eh? Okay, one last point to make uh, before we look at the model. Uh, yeah, so the final thing really is, um, you know, that it arms you against the changing meta. So, you know, as as the meta shifts and different books come out and so on, uh, you know, by having that larger collection, you have a way to pivot. So you can change your list to suit the new meta. You know, you have a way to counteract any negatives that might come from, from that meta and so on uh, by having that larger force. So, you know, if you've only got that, that small collection, Collection, it's harder to 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 play you know when your faction is maybe let's say at the at the bottom end of the the spectrum it becomes harder from a competitive standpoint but that's only if you're really into that kind of competitive thing so that becomes obviously a, a benefit to having a larger collection it makes it easier to swap out and move but I just wanted to throw that in there as, as a last point because uh, yeah <laughs> after I finished recording I, fi I realized I hadn't talked about it so I just wanted to you know put that out there as as the final the final uh, point for those that are interested in more the, the the gaming aspects of things. So yeah, now we'll go and have a look at uh, my night in Canter and see how I've gone, okay? And there we go, just some thoughts on uh, faction collection and, you know, some of the benefits of doing that. So let's see how I've gone with this Night Encanter. Uh, yeah, a lot of fun. This colour scheme's just been, uh, you know, super cool. You know, e e even now, I'm really enjoying it. You know, just getting a chance to focus on certain areas and, you know, doing different things like the blend on this on this bird here and uh, focusing on the flesh here. Uh, just doing a few little sneaky tests on some colour of shadow into that flesh. Uh, you may see some more videos on that in the future, but we'll see how we go. Uh, but yeah, you you know that's it's it's all part of that process right and having a nice efficient scheme like this and uh allows you that freedom to sort of focus on different areas and and still keep it within a, a good time frame so i hope you've enjoyed this i'll leave a nice image for him at the end uh, with the paint list as i usually do please hit that like button subscribe button it really helps me out and i guess i'll uh catch you on the next one